Hello everyone and welcome back to another exciting chess game by Mikhail Tal. And in this chess game, his opponent is Frederick Olofsson, who was the first Icelandic chess grandmaster. And this chess game was played in 1961. I think this was also a pretty much notable chess game by Mikhail Tal, a massive chess game. So let's see what happened in this chess game. Tal has the white pieces. Uh, Mikhail Tal starts the game with pushing the pawn e4, c5, the Sicilian defense, developing. And this is pretty much a standard stuff. We see the open Sicilian developing the queen, pushing the pawns, developing the pieces, bishop to e7, bishop to d3, and both players castled. Bishop to d7, and Tal is centralizing the rook, and now he is targeting the king, king to h8, exchanging the knights. And now Tal pushed the pawn e5 defending the knight but now targeting the king again and now in this position Mikhail Tal is threatening checkmate queen takes on h7 so the threat is being defended knight to h6 but now in this position what would you do Mikhail Tal push the pawn f5 and attacking the defender but in this position, there are more than one possibility. So Olofsson captured the pawn with the knight. Knight takes on f5. But what happens if d takes on e5? Then pushing the pawn. And this was the idea of Mikhail Tal. Attacking the bishop and you can't capture back with the pawn because then bishop takes knight. So bishop takes on f6 and rook takes on f6. And this is the idea of Mikhail Tal and how to defend the checkmate threat f5 is the only defense checking the king and then as you can see black is getting checkmated and there is no reasonable defense so in the real game this is why pushing the pawn f5 by Mikhail Tal was a very dangerous move for Frederick Olofsson so this is why he captured the pawn with the knight knight takes on f5 and can you see the next move of Mikhail Tal what would you do Maybe try to think like that. Well, in this position, Mikhail Tal unleashed the rook and rook takes on f5 by Mikhail Tal. This is the move, sacrificing the exchange. Rook takes on f5 by Tal. E takes on f5 and then bishop takes on f5. Why did he sacrifice the rook? the exchange and in this position he is threatening checkmate again black is defending with pushing the pawn maybe retreating the bishop comes to mind but Mikhail Tal is not retreating the bishop can you see the next move well Mikhail Tal played bishop to d4 and this is the move sacrificing the bishop for a nasty attack but we have king to g8, not accepting the sacrifice for not losing the queen. So in this position, if capturing the bishop, then e takes on d6, and this is check, and also attacking the queen, so this is losing for black. White is winning, white is much better. So in this position, instead of defending the bishop, Mikhail Tal is targeting the king with the bishop, and this is extremely dangerous for black, moving the king, so now, if capturing the pawn, there is no discover check to the king. But Mikhail Tal is not moving the bishop and he pushed the pawn. What a move by Tal. We have bishop to g5. Well, if capturing the bishop, then basically black is getting checkmated and there is no reasonable defense. This is checkmate. And if f takes on e6, then capturing the pawn with the bishop, only defense. Then bishop takes on f7, and this is also getting crushed for black. As you can see, black is falling apart, and white is much better. So in this position, pushing the pawn was a beautiful move by Mikhail Tal and bishop to g5. e takes on f7, this is check. And the only defense, rook takes on f7. And still Mikhail Tal is down the exchange. Did you notice that Frederick Olofsson is fighting with everything that he has? He is fighting 
with all his material, with all his pieces. And Mikhail Tal is constantly threatening something, attacking all the time. And Olofsson is busy with defending and Mikhail Tal is attacking. Mikhail Tal is the aggressor. Olofsson is defending. And maybe in this position, bishop to e6 is expected. The rook is pinned after bishop to e6. But Mikhail Tal captured the pawn. Bishop takes on g6. What a move. We have rook to g7. If capturing the bishop, then black is getting checkmated. Queen to h8. Checkmate. But what a move by Mikhail Tal. So rook to g7 and then queen to e6. Checking the king. And king to h8. The rook is pinned once again. Well, I think the next move of Mikhail Tal was a brilliant move. If I give you 5 seconds to pause the video, can you guess the next move of white? So you can take your time and you can try to think. But if you need, if you only want to enjoy this video, I will show you the move. Right now. Well, Mikhail Tal played bishop to 8. What a move by Tal. And we have 8-6. Of course, not accepting the sacrifice because this is not... Truly a sacrifice if capturing the bishop, can you see what happens? Then simply capturing the rook, sacrificing the queen for checkmating the king, rook takes on e8, checkmate, the rook is pinned, using this pin and checkmating the king, the rook can't go back. And if you capture the bishop with the bishop, it is the same, queen takes bishop, rook takes queen, rook takes rook, that is checkmate. So anyway, in this position, not accepting the bishop, pushing the pawn and Mikhail Tal captured the bishop. Queen takes on c6 and knight to e4. Rook to e8. Attacking the queen. Mikhail Tal played queen to g6. Again, using the speed. The rook is speed. So, rook from e to e7 defending the rook and defending the checkmate threat. And now pushing the pawn h4 Tal wants to dislodge the bishop so queen to d5 if bishop takes on h4 then capturing the pawn and this is losing also attacking the bishop so in this position not capturing the pawn and not defending if maybe capturing the bishop queen takes bishop well in this position Mikhail Tal captured the rook Simple chess for the first time. Rook takes on g7 and queen takes on d6. Exchanging the queens and going for the endgame. Because Mikhail Tal is a pawn up. Olofsson captured the pawn but Tal is a pawn up. Checking the king, defending with the rook. But before capturing the rook, Tal played a very important move. What is the move? Well, the move is checking the king. So after moving the king, only then capturing the rook. And then also capturing one more pawn. Check. And this is losing. Olafsson played bishop to g5, but Tal pushed the pawn. So, not allowing bishop to c1, pushing the pawn. And if bishop to c1, a4. And this is losing. Tal has two extra pawns. And this endgame is definitely losing. A beautiful chess game by Mikhail Tal. I'm hoping that this video was an instructive video for you. So that... You took few things from this video. And Olofsson resigned, of course, after this position, this is losing for black. And thank you for watching. Maybe, maybe Olofsson could try his chances in this position for drawing the game, but, but I'm sure that this is losing for black and Olofsson has no chance against Mikhail Tal after this position. So thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you next time with more incredible and amazing chess games from the chess history. Stay safe and take care.